In this video, I'll show you how to forge your own custom metahuman hair from scratch using Blender. Let's get started. I'm assuming you already have a metahuman in your project. So open your metahumans folder, then go inside your specific metahumans folder. In my case, it's named test. And from there, open the face folder. Now double click on the face skeletal mesh to open it in the editor. And now click on make static mesh then choose any folder where you want to save it. I'll just use the same folder as the face skeletal mesh. Now close the editor window, then right click on the static mesh we just created. Go to asset actions and choose export. Choose a location where you want to export this mesh, give it a name and click save. I already have a face mesh, so I'll just replace it with this one. In the export options, make sure to uncheck level of detail and then click export. Now switch over to Blender, go to file, import, FBX, and select the face mesh we just exported. Just make sure to uncheck animation before you hit import. All right, here's our face mesh. Before we do anything else, let's go ahead and save the project. Next, select the mesh and switch over to edit mode. If your mesh isn't selected, press A on your keyboard to select all the vertices. Then press Alt plus J to remove all the triangles. We're doing this just to make the selection a bit easier. Now click on X to switch to the side view. Once you're in side view, turn on X-ray mode so we can select all the vertices on both sides. Now go to the selection tool, hold left click and choose the lasso select tool. Now make a selection over the area where you want the hair to grow from. You don't need to be too precise, just a rough selection is perfectly fine. If you missed any spots, just hold shift on your keyboard and select those areas. Once you're happy with your selection, press P on your keyboard and choose selection. This will separate the scalp from the rest of the mesh. Now switch back from the side view, turn off X-ray mode and rename this new mesh to scalp, just to keep things organized in the outliner. Next, select the scalp and go into edit mode. Select all the vertices, either with the lasso tool or by pressing A, then hit U and choose unwrap. Unwrapping the UVs is really important for the hair system to work properly. Let's switch back to object mode. Go up to add, Choose curves and click on empty hair. If you check the outliner, you'll notice the curves are now added under the scalp mesh. You can rename it, for example, back hair or whatever name makes sense for you. Now switch to sculpt mode. This is where we have all the tools we'll need to start shaping the hair. One thing I forgot to mention, let's change the color of our scalp so it's easier to see. Go back to object mode. Remove all the materials it came with from Unreal, keep just one, and change its color to something like blue or red. Then switch to shading mode. And now you can clearly see the area where we'll be adding hair for our metahuman. Next, choose the back hair under the scalp object and head into sculpt mode. Now, select the add tool. Change the mode from sphere to projected and leave the count set to one. Then press N on your keyboard or click the small arrow on the right side to open the tool settings panel. You'll see the hair count option here. We can raise it later, but let's leave it at one for now. The next one is curve length, which basically controls how long the hair will be. And then points per curve. If you're working with longer hair, keep this between 16 and 25 for smoother strands. Let's add one hair strand to check if the length looks right. If it doesn't, just press Ctrl plus Z to undo, then increase the curve length a bit. For example, Try setting it to 28. Also, make sure to enable symmetry on the x-axis so the hair gets added on both sides. And also, turn on surface collision. That'll stop the hair from intersecting with the surface. Just remember, it only works with the scalp mesh, not the full face mesh. All right, let's add some hair. You'll notice it's symmetrical on both sides now. We'll add two strands for this test and use the comb tool to shape only these ones. Take your time with the grooming. The more care you put in, the better the results will look. You can add hundreds of strands if you want more detail. Just remember, it can get pretty heavy on performance in game. Let's go ahead and add a few more hair strands. Then switch to the selection tool and make sure you've only got the new ones selected. That way you can shape them freely without messing up the ones you already worked on.
Sorry guys, my pen tablet stopped working while I was recording this part, so the hair might not look great in the final result. I'm just not that good at sculpting with a mouse. Anyway, let's move on and open the asset browser. Here, you'll find all the hair modifiers and the best part, we don't need to mess with geometry nodes anymore to make hair. Next, click on the modifiers tab and then find interpolate hair in asset browser and just drag and drop it onto the new hair strands we made. The density is set to 10 by default. Let's bump that up to 50. Now, under surface, pick scalp and just like that, we've got hair generated. It might look a little too much right now, so go ahead and raise the distance to guides value until it feels right for your character. There's no single perfect value for these modifiers and it really depends on the style you're going for. So play around with the settings until you get the look you like. Then drag and drop the clump hair modifier onto the hair. The clump hair modifier makes the strands group up naturally, just like real hair that forms small clusters instead of staying perfectly straight. Once again, tweak the values to match your hairstyle. Just experiment until it fits the look you want. Next, select the Add Tool again, and under Curve Shape, check all the boxes. Now, when you start adding new hairs, you'll see they match the length and shape of the ones we already made. Let's switch back to Object Mode and select the scalp in the viewport. Go to Add, then Curve, and choose Empty Hair. We're adding this new curve so we can make hair on the top of the head without affecting the previous ones. Using multiple hair curves makes it much easier to design a nice layered hairstyle. Feel free to rename the new curve, then head back into Sculpt Mode. Under Curve Shape, uncheck all the options and adjust the length to your liking. Try adding a few strands to test it. If they're too short, just undo and bump the length up a bit. Make sure symmetry and surface collision are both enabled, and then start adding hair and shaping it with the comb tool. Always take your time when combing the hair. The more patience you have, the better it'll look. If you've got a daughter, you're probably already good at this. Since I don't, well, you can clearly see how bad I am at it. Now switch back to object mode. In the outliner, first select the old curve we created, then hold shift and select the new one. Next, go to the modifiers tab, click the drop down arrow on the modifier and choose copy to select it. This will copy the modifier along with all your settings to the new hair strands. Repeat this for any other modifiers you want to duplicate. This step really saves a lot of time. If you notice some hairs going inside your character's face, you can fix that in two ways. Either use the delete tool to remove the strands causing the issue or comb the hair again to adjust the shape. First, Let's select the top hair curve and try deleting the strands that are intersecting. Make sure the middle strands of the hair have a slight upward curve. That'll help the center part look more natural once we bring it into Unreal Engine. I've got a bit of extra space here, but try to keep the middle hairs closer together so the center part looks more realistic and well-defined. You can also use the Smooth tool here to even out and soften those upper curves. Once everything's done, go ahead and add the Frizz Hair Curves modifier. It basically adds a bit of randomness and subtle waves to the strands, which helps the hair look more natural and lifelike. Again, different hairstyles will need different values. So don't just copy the ones I'm using in this video. I mean, you can if you want, but the results probably won't look as good. Once you're happy with how the hair looks, you can copy the same modifier to your other hair curves. Honestly, you can make the hair look even better than this. It just takes patience and practice. And it's not like you need a pen tablet to create a good hairstyle. It's just that I'm not really used to sculpting with a mouse. 
All right, let's move to the next step. When you're happy with your hair, select the hair curve under the scalp. Head over to the Modifiers tab, click the drop down, and hit Apply. Do this for each modifier on all of your hair curves. Next, select all your hair curves in the Outliner, go up to Object, choose Convert, and click on Particle System. Go ahead and select the scalp again from the Outliner, then open the Particle Properties tab. You'll notice both of our hair curves are now converted into particles. Now click on drop down on render and viewport display properties. First, change path steps to seven, then uncheck show emitter on render and also on viewport display and then set strand steps to seven. Go ahead and repeat the same steps for the other hair particle just to keep both looking consistent. Basically, these settings control how smooth the strands look. Higher values give you smoother hair, but can slow things down a bit. All right, everything's ready. Let's export the hair. Just select the scalp from outliner. Go to File, choose Export, and then Alembic. Pick a location, name your file, and change the scale value from 1 to 100. Also, set the end frame from 250 down to 1. Go ahead and check Selected Objects and Visible Objects, then set Render to Viewport and uncheck everything under Object Options. Double check that your settings look exactly like mine, and when you're ready, hit Export. All right, we're all done here in Blender. Let's jump back into Unreal Engine and continue from there. Before we bring the hair into Unreal, open Edit, go to Plugins, and search for Alembic. Just make sure the Alembic Groom Importer plugin is turned on. It's required for importing hair correctly. Go ahead and right-click in the Content Browser, select Import into Current Folder, and then browse to the folder where you exported your hair from Blender. If you've followed all the steps right, the Groom Import Options window should pop up. Set X Rotation to negative 90, Z Rotation to negative 180, and X scale to negative one. That's important to make sure the hair lines up correctly inside Unreal. If we leave those values at their defaults, the groom asset will import with the wrong orientation. Now just click import or import all if you're bringing in more than one groom asset. Go ahead and double click the groom asset to open it up. Next, open the interpolate tab and zoom in a bit on the hair. Set the curve decimation to somewhere around 0.3 or 0.4. This really depends on the hairstyle and how many strands you made back in Blender. Next, open the Strands tab and bump the hair root scale up from 1 to 2. This will make the roots look a bit fuller. If your hair starts looking patchy or uneven, just raise the curve decimation to around 0.4. That should smooth things out. And while you're in the Strands tab, Set the hair tip scale to 0.001. This gives the hair a finer, more natural look at the ends. Next, open the Materials tab, click the plus icon, and search for hair, choose the MetaHuman hair material. Or you can use the one I'm using. I'll leave a link to it from the Fat Marketplace in the description. That pack also includes the My Video Thumbnail hair material, so you'll have everything ready to go. Big shout out to Venice for making these groom materials and sharing them for free. Seriously, amazing work. Next, open the Physics tab and turn on Niagara Simulation and Deformer Simulation. After that, lower the gravity factor. It's negative 981 by default, but setting it to around negative 480 usually works better. Feel free to tweak it if your hair still looks too heavy or reacts too strongly to gravity. Looks like everything's working fine. So let's close this window. Now right click on the hair asset and click create binding. In the binding options, set the groom binding type to skeletal mesh. And for the target skeletal mesh, pick your MetaHuman's face mesh. Once that's done, click create. And now we can finally attach the hair to our MetaHuman through the blueprint. Go ahead and select your MetaHuman, then choose edit blueprint from the outliner. Inside the blueprint window, switch to the viewport tab and in the components panel, click on the hair groom asset. Now pick the new hair asset we just made. Mine's named Custom Hair. And don't forget to select the binding asset we created for it, so the hair attaches properly to the MetaHuman. And there we go. The new hair is now attached to our MetaHuman, and it's working with physics. The only thing left is the material. Head over to the Material section and pick the one you'd like to use for your MetaHuman's hair. So this was a beginner-friendly tutorial where I showed you how to export a face mesh, create custom hair for a MetaHuman inside Blender, and then bring it into Unreal Engine to attach it properly. I actually planned to show the full hairstyle creation process, but my pen tablet died, so I had to skip that part. As a little compensation for my loyal learners, I'm creating a Discord channel where you can post any hairstyle idea you want, and everyone on the server can vote by reacting with a hearts or any reaction 
option you guys choose. The hairstyle that gets the most reactions will be featured in my next hair tutorial, which will focus entirely on showing the full hairstyle creation process from start to finish. I used Blender for this tutorial because it's free and accessible for everyone, unlike Houdini or Maya XGen, which are paid tools and not available to all users.